بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها حبيبي في الله some tips for learning the Arabic language because I've been asked this many times about how to learn Arabic and some of the hints and some of the uh, things that might help a person so hopefully that this video will be of assistance uh, to those people who are trying to learn the Arabic language first and foremost uh, if you're learning it for the religion which I'm assuming that a person asking about this uh, would be doing then Hafizahum Allah uh, one of the most important things is being sincere so having your intention uh, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the Verily, actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone should get that for which he intended. So therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger has migrated for Allah and his messenger in the Akhirah Hadith. So you get what you intended. Make sure your intention is that you are learning the Arabic language as an act of worship in that it will help you to learn the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab or the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, how they understood. You'll be able to go back to the books of the Sahaba or the, uh, the texts which contain uh, narrations of the Sahaba and, and the Ahl Hadith and so forth to understand uh, your religion better and come closer to Allah. Another important thing, so intention, sincerity, and, with, and as with any uh, act of worship, is that you do it in accordance with the Sunnah. Okay? So as far as the Sunnah with seeking knowledge, one of the things you, you might uh, uh, consider, this we will say is under the sunnah. So some of the important things we would probably say under the sunnah, the sunnah of Islam and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is that you are humble in seeking knowledge, being humble. Also in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is that you uh, you go and you seek it from the people of knowledge? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fasalah dikrin kuntum la ta'alamun." Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So seek knowledge. Whoops, my writing is horrible. Knowledge from scholars, from scholars or uh, students of knowledge or. Uh, whoever your teacher who can teach you a competent teacher who can teach you the Arabic language uh, also with that so being humble because the ulama of the past and even our ulama of today they learned by having proper manners so there's a certain way of studying so be consistent is another thing this might not necessarily be under the sunnah but I would just say be consistent in your study consistent in studies and Related to myself, uh, and I've seen many people, some of my cohorts or colleagues that I uh, began studying Arabic alongside them, some of them were ahead of me and some were after me, but a lot of them surpassed me because they were consistent. And probably and just from the tawfiq from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I had many uh, companions who we've, we've studied Islam more or less around the same amount of time, but they were consistent. And their level of knowledge is much higher because Allah gave them tawfiq for number one, and they had sincerity, but they were sincere and strong students of knowledge, and they were consistent. They didn't stop. So make sure that if you're gonna study the Arabic language that you have, or even Islam, that you are consistent. Do not stop. When you finish one book, try your best to Hopefully your teacher will be able to take you to the next book. In the next book, finish the series or whatever because this is going to give you something. It's going to give you a tool that you're going to build the rest of your studies on. Once you learn Arabic, and if you learn it good, there's a difference between people who know the Arabic language very good and those who learn it so-so. And those, you know, and then everywhere in between. It doesn't mean you have to be a translator and this and that and the other. Some people, Allah has favored them with the gift they can translate on spot. The Shaykh is speaking in Arabic and they can speak in English and they're not native speakers. Some people know it, it takes for them, they need to go to the dictionary and so forth. Whatever the case may be, the point being is being consistent and, and as we mentioned, being sincere and also uh, studying strong and finishing. 
finishing a set of books, if you're studying the Medina books, which are really popular, then study the three Medina grammar books. You need a teacher to take you to those levels. And you also uh, will probably study the other, other books in the series to complement that because it's very difficult to just study those three books and necessarily be competent because uh, those books are grammar books. The books that we usually study from the Medina series that most people are familiar with are grammar books, basically. So they're not uh, necessarily geared for uh, in-depth speaking and, and some of the other skills that complement because acquiring a language, learning a language, requires integrating those skills and being consistent. So that's very important. Also realizing what you want to learn the Arabic. Do you want to learn Arabic because you just want to go to the text? Or do you want to learn Arabic because you also want to be able to speak and communicate in Arabic, Arabic speaking lang, uh, lands? Whatever the case may be, you want to be able to talk to the ulama, what have you. So then you'll need a, a, a level of also learning how to speak. You, you'll speak, you'll learn reading, writing, you need all those skills and they complement each other. Some people, they have a lot of Arabic, but they can't write. To write an Arabic essay requires certain skills and it requires a certain level of competence. To write research, that's a whole other level. You know, whatever. Depends on what your intention is for learning the language. So being consistent, being humble, seek knowledge from people who are knowledgeable in the, in the subject. Another point I want to mention, if you go and seek knowledge, meaning go take a rahna li talib al ilm you want to go and you want to study in another uh, country, uh, there are many places to study, walhamdulillah, and, and, and to travel to. Unfortunately, with all the attention that we have going on in the world, it's not always easily accessible to get to many places. But mashallah, there's still plenty of places to learn the Arabic language. My personal suggestion of one of the places that is easiest, although they have some turmoil, and, and very competent, very strong Arabic is in Egypt. Egypt is very good, although I didn't study there, but I traveled there and I've seen many people come from there. My experience is more in Yemen and Saudi Arabia. And, but as far as for men and women, Egypt is open and there are serious and there's many places opportunity. Saudi Arabia, uh, there are institutions, but generally in some places it's very weak. To, and all honestly, very weak, unless you're blessed to be in one of the universities to get in Jamal Islamiyah, Umm al Qura, or Jamal al Imam and stuff. And so those are a great benefit, but many people don't have that uh, opportunity. So they don't really have the same strength of studies. But if you go to Egypt, there's many centers very strong, a lot of experience that can teach you. Another thing I will say, if you take a trip to study, of course seek advice from the scholars about this. Ask a student of knowledge to ask the question to ulama or something if this is something that troubles you about the places you study and about who you take your knowledge from. Very important who you take your knowledge from. But what I will say is do not prohibit yourself from good. And what I mean by this, I lived in Yemen and I've seen some brothers come all the way from America, which takes a lot of money coming from America, to go study in a place like Yemen, and then they study from other Americans and study from other Westerners who are not necessarily native speakers, sometimes that are only so competent in language. And I'm not belittling anyone, but I know some brothers, mashallah, that are very strong in the language. Allah has favored them. I know uh, brothers in Sana'a, I know brothers in Shehir, and, and, and that used to be in Damaj and so forth and other Marakas and Ilm and Sunnah but my thing is, is do not prohibit yourself from Khair because I knew brothers, they couldn't go to Damaj, they couldn't go to the Marakas they stayed in Sana'a and then they would have inconsistent durus to learn the Arabic from non-native speakers and, and because they felt the institutes were institutes of Hizbiyah, institutes of this, institutes of that they prohibited themselves, in my view, of Khair because they could have went, humble yourself, go to those institutes, pay the money, even myself, I had situations like that, pay the money and benefit. And you're not there to learn Dean from them, but learn if you don't have a way to get a consistent teacher otherwise, who's from Ahl Sunnah, benefit from those institutes. Don't pay all your money and be stubborn and say, well, they're institutes of Izbiya, they're institutes of this. You're going to prohibit yourself from Khair. You're going to close yourself from Khair and you might not even learn Arabic. So do not destroy your opportunity. We're going to keep it very brief and I, I, I'll just keep it at that. And may Allah bless us all with tawfiq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.